The state of Ohio is well known in the wholesaling industry for enforcing the rules about how to legally wholesale real estate. On this video, I'm gonna break down those rules for you. And even if you don't wholesale in Ohio, I want you to pay special attention to this video because the principles apply no matter what state you're in. Coming up. This video is brought to you by the 100% Funding System, a program where Jerry Norton funds 100% of your deals with his money. To learn more, go to usejerryscash.com. If you're new here, my name is Jerry Norton and I've been a full-time real estate investor now for over 17 years. Amongst other things, I specialize in flipping houses all across the country and I've helped thousands of new investors get into the game of flipping and create six-figure and even seven-figure incomes. If you wanna learn how to flip houses so you can live your dream life, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to get notified when new videos are released. Real estate is governed at the state level under the Department of Commerce known as the Division of Real Estate and Licensing. The role of this department is to enforce the rules and the regulations about how real estate is transacted in order to protect the consumer. If there's anything you take away from this video, it's this. All of the rules and all of the regulations about wholesaling are there to protect the homeowner from your potentially harmful actions. There are hundreds of ways you could potentially do wrong to a homeowner and your state's regulatory board is going to have a problem with you even if your violation isn't clearly spelled out in writing. It's all about consumer protection. Now I recently did a video about the five most common ways wholesalers are dishonest and unethical and it all comes down to disclosing your intentions to the seller. Now, if wholesaling with integrity is important to you, I highly recommend you watch that video. I'll put the link in the description below and you can watch it later. So let's take a closer look at Ohio's rules and regulations around wholesaling, but I want you to look past what you can and can't do and look at the bigger picture. Ask yourself, why can I or can't I do this or that? What's the principle in the rule? Do that and you'll steer clear of violating the law and wholesale with the highest standards of integrity. The first principle to discuss is regarding real estate licensing. Currently in Ohio and most states, if done correctly, you do not have to be a licensed real estate professional to legally wholesale, but this is starting to change in the industry. The state of Illinois enacted legislation requiring wholesalers to be licensed after doing just one transaction. And I believe in the next few years, all states will follow suit. My advice to you is if you are serious about wholesaling, to get your license. In my opinion, the pros far outweigh the cons. Now the problem Ohio and most states have is that wholesalers often behave in ways that violate licensing law. It's a blurry line that many wholesalers cross. It comes down to this. If you are compensated for assisting a buyer or a seller in a transaction on a property that you are not the owner, you must be licensed. Now the way wholesalers try to get around this is they create what's called equitable interest in the property by executing a legally binding contract with a seller and then assign the rights of that contract to a cash buyer for a fee. In that regard, technically they didn't receive unlicensed compensation but it's not so cut and dry because the division also looks at intent. If your intention when contracting with a seller is not to close as the buyer, but rather assign the contract, that is not okay. This is where many wholesalers are confused and where so much debate and controversy arises. Let me settle the argument once and for all. While the act of assigning a contract is okay, the practice of assigning contracts is not okay. The division does not recognize assigning contracts as a legitimate business practice. That means putting a property under contract with no intent or ability to close and only to assign is a fraudulent activity. So how will you get in trouble? Here's how wholesalers have been fined for violating licensing law. You put a property under contract and then you can't find a buyer so you back out and don't close. Then you get reported to the division and they investigate and find out you did not have any intention or the funds to actually buy the property and they fine you for violating the law. Now the reason why the state of Ohio has come down hard on this is because groups of wholesalers were putting hundreds of properties under contract to a sign that never closed. And remember the big picture, why does the state care? 
it's all about consumer protection. It's potentially harmful to sellers to contract to buy their property and then not close. Here's what most wholesalers don't realize. When you put a property under contract, you have a legal and moral obligation to perform on the contract. The safest way to wholesale is to make sure you are able to close on the property if you can't assign it, even if you are borrowing funds to do it. For me, I almost always close on the property first, even when I intend to wholesale it. This is called a double closing. That way it's clear and nobody can argue my intentions with sellers. I advise you to do the same, and I even started a fund where you can use 100% of my money to fund your double closing transactions. To learn more, register for a free training to get all the details. Just go to usejerryscash.com to learn more. The next big issue is regarding advertising and marketing properties for sale. Ohio law plainly states that you may only advertise a property for sale under two conditions. One, you are the property owner, and two, you are a licensed agent with a listing agreement with the property owner and acting within licensed law. Other than that, it is illegal to market a property for sale. That means as a wholesaler, you cannot market a property for sale that you do not own. You must be explicitly clear that you are marketing a contract for sale, not a property for sale, which I just explained, leads to question if you are assigning contracts as a business practice without intent or means to close. So to make this more concrete for you, let's list off all of the do's and don'ts. If you own the property and hold the deed, mark it away, no issues with division. If you are wholesaling via assignments, the division may view you as acting like an agent and will have a problem. If you consistently let contracts expire or you cancel them when you can't assign them, the division will have a serious problem with you. If you put a lot of properties under contract, assign a few and let the rest expire and never take title to any, big problem. If you assign most or all of your deals but rarely never buy one, then you look like an unlicensed agent and the division will have a problem. If you put properties under contract without the means to purchase and close on them, division will have a problem with you. And as far as marketing properties for sale, if you market a property you do not have under contract, big trouble, don't ever do that. If you market a property you have under contract, but your marketing is not crystal clear that you do not own the property, you have a problem. And verbal joint venture marketing agreements with other wholesalers are meaningless, and written JV marketing agreements likely won't survive scrutiny because division will view it as an agreement to market a property for a fee upon sale, which is not okay. Listen, wholesalers provide a necessary and much needed service to distressed sellers, but you have to do it the right way. And just like with our own personal accountability with God, sins of omission don't fly with the Ohio Division of Real Estate. A person may be guilty of a sin of omission if he fails to do something which he is able to do and which he ought to do, but doesn't. In the Bible, James, the brother of Jesus, more exactly defines this sin when he states, whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is a sin. It is your responsibility to learn your state's laws and rules regarding wholesaling and then follow those rules with integrity. And keep in mind, the wholesaling industry is under attack by the National Association of Realtors and other regulatory agencies, so it's time for our industry to raise the bar. So watch this next video to learn how you should adapt, and if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to my channel. With over 750 videos, this is the number one channel on YouTube for all things flipping, and I'll see you on the next video.